Good day everyone, I am Sir Jerickson S. Chua and welcome to Empowerment Technologies. So before we start our session for today, may I request all of you to please bow your head as we feel the presence of our Lord through this prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Information and Communication Technology, or ICT, is a force that has changed many aspects of the way we live. The world is moving rapidly into digital media, and information and communication technology has truly become commonplace entities in all aspects of life. Over the years, the application of ICT has fundamentally changed the practices and procedures of nearly all forms of endeavor within business and governance. The use of ICT in education lends itself to a more student-centered learning setting. Oftentimes, this creates some tension for some teachers and students, but with the rapid digital media information movement, the role of ICT in education is becoming more and more important, and this importance will continue to grow and develop in this millennium. For today's lesson, we will talk about ICT as an agent of change. Our learning objectives are as follows. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to understand the importance of ICT as a platform for social change, understand the events that ICT help realize change, and use prior ICT knowledge in planning a campaign using online resources. Our key terms, we have Digital 2020, the Internet, we have the evolution of ICT, the role of ICT in recent history and change.org. Does the Philippines we know today become what it is without ICT? Most people would argue that we are lag behind when it comes to technological advancement. But that does not mean that we have not used what we have to our benefit. For a moment, let's try to imagine that the internet has disappeared and will never be back. What do you think will happen? You never miss the water until the well runs dry. And maybe some saying goes for the internet. How many times have your ISP or internet service provider deprived you of your right to access the internet? How many times have you been frustrated? But besides not being able to update what you have for dinner last night or updating your profile picture, there are actually far bigger things this world would have missed without the internet. In fact, ICT in general have played a key role in our history. So here are the top online activities here in the Philippines. 47% of the Filipinos use social media, 19% for videos, 15% for online and mobile games, 29% for online shopping, and 13% is used for location-based search. So let's proceed now to the digital in 2020. So this is a website that researches the usage of ICT in the world. 
So this is the percentage of internet users aged 16 to 64 who re report use each type of mobile app each month. Okay, so 89% is used for chat apps or messengers or social networking apps. 65% is used for entertainment or video apps and we have map apps. 47% is used for games. 66% is used for shopping apps. 52% is used for music apps. 35% is used for banking apps. 11% is used for dating apps. And 26% is health and fitness app. Okay, so if you remember our lesson before on our lesson one, we have talked about that um, based on research that majority of people really use social media apps as a way to entertain themselves on the online world. So this is also the average time spent using mobile devices each day worldwide. Um, we have 3 hours and 40 minutes as the daily average of people using the uh, social media apps. Okay, So 50% of this time is used for social and communication apps. 21% is used for video and entertainment. 9% is for playing games. And 19% is for use with other kinds of applications. So this is also the world's most used social media platform okay based on the monthly active users active user accounts advertising audience and unique monthly visitors so this is in millions format okay so we have number one as facebook okay second we have youtube third we have whatsapp fourth we have messenger and we have on the fifth spot we have wechat aside from that we have instagram TikTok, QQ, QZone, Sina, Webio, Reddit, Snapchat, Twitter, Pinterest, and Kuaishu. So let's now proceed to the global internet speed. Okay, so on the first spot we have South Korea. On the third spot we have Japan. We uh, on the fourth spot we have Singapore. On the fifth spot we have Thailand, to be followed by Hong Kong. On the 15th spot, we have Taiwan to be followed by uh, New Zealand, Vietnam, Australia, Malaysia, China, India, Indonesia. And on the 78th spot, we have here the Philippines. Okay, compared to the other country, we really are lagging behind when it comes to internet speed. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the mobile internet connection speed based on the average mobile internet connection speed in Mbps. So as you can see here, number one, we have South Korea to be followed by UAE and um, we also have here China, Canada, Netherlands and so on. And on almost on the last spot, we have here the Philippines. Okay, so we really have a slow internet connection. As you can see here, this is the global average, but... As you can see, we are here on the last spot Okay, when it comes to internet speed. Okay, so how fast is the internet speed here in the Philippines? This is on April 2020 data. Okay, so um, we have for mobile um, internet, we have 12.09 Mbps for download and 5.23 Mbps for upload. For fixed broadband, we have about 21 Mbps for download and 20.18 Mbps for upload. So this is just an average of all the ISP providers that we have here in the Philippines. So this is the internet speed in Asia. So as you can see, the average for the Philippines is about 3.7 Mbps. For Myanmar, we have 5.1 Mbps. For Laos, 5.6 Mbps. And so on and as you can see the global average internet speed should be about 24.2 mbps and we really are lagging behind when it comes to the speed of internet connection and singapore has about 1.33.1 mbps speed okay so as you can see here on this chart really singapore has one of the um as internet connection here globally okay and the Philippines is really lagging behind when it comes to internet speed. 
Okay, so let's proceed now to the pre-information and communication technology. Okay, so on this uh, particular topic, we're going to have a little bit of an overview of what has been the changes of technology uses from before and today. Okay, so the information and communication technology is a part of digital age where internet communication is one of the most common ways to keep in touch with the other people. But even before the digital age, there are plenty of ways humans were able to communicate. During the tribal era or age, our ancestors started communicating through body and verbal communication. Eventually, they learned to be literate and were able to store knowledge through wall paintings and stone carvings. By the 11th century, the Chinese invented the movable type that was able to replicate documents. By 1440, a German named Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press in Europe that made it possible to reproduce documents using ink. This made books easy to reproduce and eventually made newspaper available by 1605. Finally, electronic-based communication started with the invention of telegraph. The invention was only start as new technologies like the telephone, radio, and television came to reality. Now let's proceed to the evolution of ICT. Today we consider ourselves living in the digital age. Almost every device is now updating. Back then, TVs were just TVs, and cell phones were just for calling and sending SMS. At present, most devices are now smart. Smartphones, smart TVs, and smart refrigerators are only few examples of devices that do more than their regular functions. Computers make it possible for these devices to be programmed with codes and can do more than what we are used to. We can divide ICT's evolution into five different phases. The first phase is the first computer. During the World War II, it marked the creation of the first electromagnetic calculator. This device weighted about 5 tons that were about 1,972 modern computer laptops. Smaller and more versatile computers were eventually developed using transistors in 1947. So here are examples of the first computers before. We have the ENIAC or Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. We have the EDVAC or Electronic Discrete Variable Automatic Computer and we have the UNIVAC or Universal Automatic Computer. On the second phase, we have the personal computers. During the 1970s, the development of personal computers started. This is made possible by chip technology and magnetic disks which made bulky computers fit a desktop. This technology made word processing Accounting and graphics easily available to the public. So this is the example of IBM PC5150 with keyboard and green monochrome monitor running in MS-DOS 5.0. Next, we have the third phase or microprocessors. Microprocessors is also known as the logic chip were eventually invented which reduce cost of processing power of computers. So this is an example of what we call your microprocessor or also known as your CPU or central processing unit. And nowadays, there are new um, CPUs that are being provided by Intel or AMD companies. We have the fourth phase which is networking. So soon thereafter, small connections were made so that computers were able to communicate with each other. This all started in small distances, then eventually broke the distance barriers which gave birth to the internet. These days, we still see newer developments which make our internet connections faster, thus improving this technology. And on the fifth phase, we have the wireless technology. And we can see this nowadays. Wired connections were already a huge advancement for the internet. But to travel to different places 
while still being connected or browse on websites, update your social media status, and search Google were all made possible with wireless technologies. And there are a lot of wireless technologies nowadays. As you can see here, we have your computers, iPods, and cell phones, robots that, that is connected uh, wirelessly. We have webcams, radios, your wireless fidelity or Wi-Fi, Bluetooth technology, wireless networks, and we have satellites, okay, as uh, one example of the wireless technologies that we now use today. So let's try to look on the role of ICT in the recent history, especially here in the Philippines. Throughout the recent history, the Philippines has been one of the few nations that really demonstrates unity for a call to action or social change. These campaigns for social change would not have been not successful actually if it were not for the information and communications technology. And one of the um, major change that really happened was during the regime of President Marcos from martial law into a democratic country. And that happened during the EDSA or Epifanio de los Santos Avenue People Power Revolution. Okay, so let's try to take a look back a little bit of the, what happened in the di different constitutions of the Philippines. So um, on January 18, 1999 to March 1901, we have here the First Republic of the Philippines during the Spanish era, which is also known as the Malolos Constitution. On the Second Republic, we have the Japanese era. This happened in October 1943 to August 1945. Okay, we have the 1943 Constitution. Okay, on the Third Republic, we have from July 1946 to January 1973, okay, this is the 1935 Constitution, okay, which happened during the American colonization, which is also known as the Commonwealth period, okay. We have the Fourth Republic, okay, this was during the regime of President Marcos, which is the martial law. This happened in January 1973 to February 1986. And this is all uh, termed as 1973 Constitution. And from February 1987 to present, we still follow the 1987 Constitution, which is the Fifth Republic of the Philippines, which is a democratic country. So up until now, we are still using the 1987 Constitution, but there are some presidents actually that really want to have what we call charter change, okay, that they really want to change our constitution and change it to new constitution and one of the changes also that our uh, current president also want is what what they call a federal government so once we want to pursue that federal government we need to change our constitution so if that pursues we will have our sixth republic but up until now, we still follow our Fifth Republic of the Philippines, which is a democratic country. Okay, so here are some of the presidents of the Philippines. Um, uh, during the Malolos Republic, we have Emilio Aguinaldo. Um, uh, he was the president for two years. On the Commonwealth period from 1935 to 1946, we have Manuel Alcazon for nine years, Sergio Osmeña for two years, Manuel Rojas for two years. On the Second Republic, we have 1943 to 1945, we have Jose P. Laurel. Okay, this was during the Japanese era for two years. Okay, on the Third Republic, 1946 to 1972, we have Manuel Rojas for two years, Elpidio Quirino for five years, Ramon Magsasay for four years, Carlos P. Garcia for four years, Justado Macapagal, which is the father of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, for four years, Ferdinand Marcos for 21 years. Okay, so he reigned for 21 years. Okay, for the Republic, um, this is from 1972 to 1987. We have Ferdinand Marcos, so this was during the martial law, and Corazon Aquino for six years. Okay. Then we have the Fifth Republic, okay, and this was um, initialized by Corazon V. Aquino, okay, which is the Demo Democratic Republic. So he, uh, she was the president for about six years. Then after Corazon Aquino, we have Fidel V. Ramos for six years, Joseph Ejercito Estrada for three years, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo for nine years, Benindo Aquino for six years, and we have President Rodrigo Duterte, which is handing his um, presidency 
okay, this 2022 elections. Okay, so as you can see, uh, between Joseph Estrada and Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, um, one of the recent changes is is that we have the EDSA People Power Revolution 2 or EDSA DOS. But that's why, as you can see, um, Joseph Ejercito Estrada only lasted for three years and Gloria Macapagal Arroyo was the vice president before. So she get the three years of Joseph Ejercito Estrada as the president of the Philippines and then she ran for presidency after that three-year term. So for our quote today, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. So this really um, unites people if you want, if they want change in their life. This is according to Helen Keller. Okay, so let's proceed to the different events that happened in the Philippines. The first one is we have EDSA People Power Revolution. So the People Power Revolution lasted from 1983 to 1986. During a radio broadcast of Radio Veritas, Cardinal Sin encouraged the Filipinos to help end the regime of then-President Ferdinand Marcos. A major protest took place along EDSA from February 22 to 25, 1986, involving 2 million Filipinos from different sectors. This included civilians, political parties, and the military and religious groups. And the radio broadcast helped change the course of history. Without it, the Filipinos would not have been moved into action. So that's one of the great use of ICT, which is through radio broadcast. So here are some photos during the EDSA People Power Revolution. So as you can see, along EDSA, there are about 2 million Filipinos who really protested to end the regime of President Marcus. And here, as you can see, this is where President Corazon V. Aquino was uh, inducted as the next president of the Philippines for a democratic country. Next is we have the Second People Power Revolution. So this is also known as the 2001 EDSA Revolution, which happened during January 17 to 21, 2001. It was fueled after 10 senator, judges, and 11 prosecutors of then-President Joseph Estrada walked out of the impeachment trial. Okay, As a result, uh, the crowd in EDSA grew over the course of few days through text brigades. Okay, So texting was um, the technology that was used before. Like the first people power revolution, EDSA DOS would not have been successful without the tax brigades. Okay, So um, during these years, cell phones was already in use and some of the major companies that uh, created cell phones before, I, we have um, Nokia, Sony Ericsson, and other brands. So this was some pictures of the EDSA DOS in the EDSA Avenue. Okay, so as you can see here, um, through the um, texting brigade, many people were influenced to have the protest okay, for the EDSA DOS. Next, we have the Million People March. So this is one of the most more recent activity that uh, really happened here in the Philippines. So this is a series of protests that mainly took place in the Rizal Park from August 22 to 26, 2013. Okay. There were also several demonstrations that happened around key cities in the Philippines and some locations overseas. Okay. So it was really to condemn the misuse of the Priority Development Assistance Fund or what we call PIDAF. So PIDAF is also known as your pork barrel. Okay. Though dubbed as the Million People March, the number of the total attendees was only about 400,000 people. Despite that, it was still considered a success and clearly demonstrated how powerful social media campaigns are. The organizers use um, to promote okay, the Million People March using Facebook and Change.org as their medium or media. So here are some photos during the Million People March. So as you can see here, the Rizal Park or Luneta Park was full of people. So imagine 400,000 people protesting okay, to abort what we call the PIDAF or the pork barrel. 
Next, we have the Yolanda People found Finder. Okay, so recent storms in the Philippines history gave birth to the Person Finder database, which is powered by Google. During Typhoon Yolanda, the People Finder was a vital tool for people across the globe to track the situation of their relatives. This proved to be successful and now adopted by more organizations to help people track relatives during calamities. Okay, so because of what we call Google, okay, we can now find people who were lost during the Yolanda catastrophe. So as you can see here, this is um, the eye of the storm during the um, Yolanda typhoon. So as you can see, it really engulfed okay, the whole country with this particular typhoon. That's why it's very, very devastating for Leyte and the uh, uh, other uh, provinces around Leyte. Okay, so let's proceed to what we call our Change.org. So Change.org is one of a platform that really helps people okay, unite to create change in this world. And Change.org is dubbed as the world platform for change where anyone from the online community can create a petition and ask others to sign it. During the past times, petitions are not only done through signing a paper, usually done by a group asking for signatures via travel. Okay, So Change.org gives access to more people by allowing the online community to affix their digital signatures on a petition. So Change.org's mission is to help people from around the world to create change they want to see. For years, Change.org hosted several petitions that help solve the following problems. We have economic problems, criminal injustice, abuse to human rights, lacks of education, environmental concerns, animal abuse, human health concerns, and world hunger. So this is the change.org website. So as you can see, there are a lot of petitions. If you want to be part of that petition, you may just sign for it. Or if you want to create a petition for yourself, okay, for, for a movement and so on, okay, you may just create one. So in summary of our discussion, ICT has helped improve communication when Filipinos needed it the most. Raja Veritas helped in the success of the People Power Revolution. Tax Brigade helped in the success of EDSA DOS. Social media like Facebook helped the success of Million People March. Finally, technology like the Person Finder helped bring comfort to families looking for their loved ones during calamities like the Typhoon Yolanda. Change.org is an online petition platform that allows online community to create or sign petition. To create or sign petition, log into Change.org's website, then click on the petition that you want to sign. For our practice, we're going to do PETA 7, which is on social issues. So what you're going to do now is to take three screenshots of any social issue on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, including the author or reference. Create a short description of the issue, example, excessive use of plastic bag, the campaign name, no plastic for greener community, and lastly, um, you need to create at least three ways on how to solve this issue. So examples of issues are as follows. You can do poverty, unemployment, terrorism, discrimination, health concerns, and others. Thank you for watching and I hope that you have learned many things from our discussion. See you on our next lesson. Keep safe and God bless.